I actually want to start with the news about this letter that the president's lawyers wrote to the special counsel back in January. His legal team admits that the president himself dictated that statement uh, on the Trump Tower meeting. And this is what the letter says. It says, quote, the president dictated a short but accurate response to the New York Times article on, be on behalf of his son, Donald Trump Jr. That's a direct contradiction to what the White House said last year. Take a listen. That was written by Donald Trump Jr. and, and I'm sure with, in consultation with his lawyer. So that wasn't written by the president. The president didn't sign off on, on anything. But the president was not involved in the drafting of the statement and did not issue the statement. It came from uh, Donald Trump Jr. He certainly didn't dictate, but, you know, he, like I said, he weighed in, offered suggestion like any father would do. Mr. Leader, are you bothered by the fact that the White House lied about the president's involvement here? Uh, Dana, first of all, th uh, Dana, th first of all, thank you for having me. Um, the one thing I have found, this has gone on for more than a year. Millions of dollars have been spent. The White House has been cooperating all the way through. This was all based upon was there collusion involved in the election. Everyone has looked at this as there's no collusion going Mr. forward. Mr. Leader, I understand um, that those, those are the different. talking points, but this is a specific question. Are you concerned that the White House, you, you heard the sound bites, you saw the statement from his own lawyers, they lied. Yeah, does that concern you? They could go on with the investigation. What I was concerned most about, like most Americans, was there any collusion? There was no collusion. This has gone on for more than a year. It's been investigated in so many different manners. What I'm really concerned about is look at what our economic numbers are. Look at North Korea's meeting going through. Look at the trade discussions we're having. And these, this is the number one question we're following through. Let them f walk through their investigation. But I think if there's no collusion, it's time to wind this down. Okay. You don't want to answer the question about the lies. We're going to talk about the economy in a second. But let me talk just even more, more broadly about what the White House legal team, excuse me, the president's legal team asserted in this letter, and that is that the president can't be subpoenaed to testify. He can't commit obstruction of justice for firing uh, DOJ officials. He could even potentially shut down the Russia investigation if he chooses to do so. That sounds like a president who, at least his legal team thinks, he's, he's above the law, or at least he doesn't see the rule of law maybe the way others do. How do you view those statements? That's well, that's the action of the legal team moving forward. Let's look at the action of what the White House has done. They ha have cooperated fully. The president said, let's get to the bottom of this. They have walked through this. We have spent millions of dollars on this. We have investigated it in the House. We have investigated it in the Senate. We are looking for, is there any collusion? And there has been no collusion moving forward. I'll think the legal teams can argue about what they can and cannot do in the process. But the one thing I have found is that the White House has been cooperating. Okay. That that might be fair that the legal team can make the argument, but you could be the next Speaker of the House. That is a constitutional yes. role, second in line to the presidency. So the Constitution vests incredible oversight responsibility in you, in the House of Representatives. So your opinion matters here. Does the president, any president, have the sweeping powers that his legal team argues he has? Well. I think the Supreme Court could make the argument there. The Constitution says the only thing within here that the House has is about impeachment. So I think what the argument is going forward is, was there any collusion going through? And that's exactly what the House looked at. That's exactly what the Senate looked at. And even if you talk to Republicans and Democrats, they have found no collusion in the process. I think the Supreme Court, and if you look back to even what Clinton would argue in this process, too, I think it's still vague. So I think maybe you could have a legal ruling to see one side or the other. And every day in court, both sides on legal sides make arguments about what the determination one, is. One more question about checks and balances. The president's uh, lawyers in the letter that they wrote talked about broad pardon authority. He actually used some of his pardon authority this week. He, he pardoned conservative filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza. Take the name Donald Trump out of this. Put the name Hillary Clinton in or Barack Obama. If a Democratic president started pardoning his political allies, you'd go bonkers. And we're hearing crickets from Republicans now. What happened to checks and balances? Well, I also watched... 
<laughs> That's exactly what checks and balances are. The, the president has the power of the pardon. Just as he pardoned a boxer because he was African-American, was, uh, was put illegally because he married a white woman. Did you talk about that pardon yes, as well? we did. Uh, we did. But is I this... think the president, the president has the power to pardon. Mm -hmm. That is part of the process of checks and balances, and also part of checks and balances. That is why the House looked at, was there any collusion in the process? We've gone on for more than a year. But we this have is spent separate. This is about pardoning his process. political allies. This isn't about Russia, just more broadly. Is that the is that the basis why the president pardoned? I mean, that would be a question for the president. Does the president have the power to pardon, just as presidents have before them pardoned individuals going forward? We will look at where the president goes in the pardon, but the president, the question is very clear and constitutionally. The president does have the power to pardon. Do you think he has the power, the power to pardon himself? What do you think? I don't believe uh, that'd be a legal question. The president is not saying he's going to pardon himself. I don't know why we're walking through hypotheticals here in this process. The president has never said he'd pardon himself. I don't know where the president would go forward pardoning himself, but I don't think a president should pardon themselves. Yeah, the only reason I asked is because it was brought up by his legal team in that letter. Let's move on to uh, what your former colleague, the former Speaker of the House, John Boehner, said this week. Take a listen. There is no Republican Party. There's a Trump party. The Republican Party is kind of taking a nap somewhere. He worked very closely with John Boehner. Uh, he were his number two in the House. And there's no doubt that the Republican Party has changed over the years. Do you think it's changed for the better? Well, I would think it changed for the better because let's first look at the facts, Dana. We're at 3.8% unemployment. This ties a 50-year low in America. African-American and women are at the lowest in unemployment. Unemployment claims are at a 44-year low. The GI Bill is now no longer 15 years or you lose it. It's now for a lifetime. You've been trafficking the, the modern-day slavery. We actually eliminated that process when it comes to online where 70% of that is being used. Look what we're doing in two weeks here. 70 different bills when it comes to opioid. Rebuilding the military. And then one thing we've never even talked about in this discussion, Come June 12th, North Korea is sitting down talking about dismantling their nuclear weapons. So you know what? I'm proud of this Republican Party. I'm proud of what we've been able to achieve. Two million more jobs in America. Yes, you know, we are working hard exactly what we said we, we would do. That is a proud Republican Party. That is a party that stands on their principles. That is part of what we ran on. That is part of what we said we would do. And you know what? We're accomplishing it. You talked about the accomplishments, rightly so, including the economy. It is humming. There's no question. Um, that should be really good news for you heading into November's election. But a lot of your Republican colleagues are really worried about a potential trade war over the steel and aluminum tariffs that the president is putting in place, that they could hurt your constituents, make voters upset. Is the president making a mistake that could jeopardize the House majority? First, let's look at the facts. We are, I disagree with trade wars. I don't think anybody wins a trade war, but we are not in a trade war. Not We're yet, trade but is discussion. the president pushing us to head that way? No, he is not. We're in a trade discussion to renegotiate NAFTA. Remember what we've been able to achieve in this short amount of time. We have renegotiated a trade deal with South Korea that, you know what, makes America a little stronger. If we build a car in America today and it goes to China, it gets a 25% tariff. If it goes to the EU, it gets a 10% tariff. But if they send cars to us, it's two and a half. So what I think is happening here, just as Republicans said, we believe in free trade, but we believe in fair trade. The president is standing up. Think about every country around this world would agree with us, even the EU. That's why they entered the WTO Mr. complaint against China on the theft of IP. I think what we're finding here is we're in the middle of a trade discussion. Nobody wants to be in a trade war. Nobody wins a trade war. But we're standing up for the process of where we're moving forward, that we have fair trade. If you're talking about Canada, look what they do when it comes to our dairy products. Look what it, our wine cannot sit on their supermarkets. I think this is a discussion trying to finalize the NAFTA agreement, going through on renegotiations, and you're just in the middle of it. Mr. Leader, thank you so much for joining me at that early hour out in California. I really appreciate it. Thank you.